Welcome back, everybody, to another Verdant intro interview. I'm here now with the LOL director, Froomey. Thanks for sitting down with us, mate. Hello. Good to be here again. <laughs> Absolutely. Another one every Absolutely. season. <laughs> Yeah, dude, you're used to this uh, this this routine right now. I'm sure you've been around for a fair old time. But let's get right into it. You are the League of Legends director for Verdant. Tell us about what your vision is for that role and how do you fit into this team? Yeah, so <clears throat> my role basically is... Oh, my voice is fucking gone. <laughs> <coughs> really sorry, really sorry. Um, yeah, so my, my job basically is for the longevity of the organization is to make sure that we stick to both our long-term and short-term goals. So I head up a lot of the recruitment, both player and staff wise. I do a lot of the player scouting and basically bring in people who I see fit to carry out the vision of the organization, which is to, to go from strength to strength. So for example, last year, unfortunately we went from div two to div three. Um, I think there were a couple of stumbling blocks in terms of getting the right fits into the organization. But once we found our foot in um, last summer, we had a great time. We basically had a, a set of players who did everything we asked of them. You know, we had a good run in the cup and we, we managed to get promoted. But now, obviously, going to, into Div 1, the stakes are a little bit higher. There's no threat of relegation in spring. But we want to make sure that we put a team together that's able to compete, at least for the playoffs, and to try and push for those... Uh, E master spots. <clears throat> They're not yeah. called the E masters anymore, is it? It's like EME. <laughs> EME, yeah, yeah. Masters. EME masters. But yeah, but no, yeah the principle is the same. Like we want to compete yeah. and be one of the best teams in the league. Yeah, one hundred percent. That's what we love to hear. Okay, so uh, a little bit of your own personal history as well. You were a player back in twenty sixteen, <laughs> including some time on Enclave, a, a prominent UK org at the time. How has the the management side of what we could call the semi professional level of UK esports changed over the years, in your view? Given that you've now experienced it on both sides of that equation. Yeah, well, um, I was a player a long, <laughs> long time ago, but yeah. Um, so yeah, I started off on Enclave, uh, an organization that was quite prominent in the UK lol scene for a few years. Um, Phil McCartney was the owner at the time. He was, mm -hmm. he was a nice guy. We worked together really well. And um, he, he gave me my first proper shot in management because uh, I was the captain of the lol team. And uh, I stepped down because of university commitments. I didn't want to put too much time into playing when I still had a master's degree. To try and get um and I, I gave management a go because they wanted me to stick around as a manager and back then it was completely different to what it is now like a lot of teams would just come together through drive and there wasn't as much money in the scene back then like um mm -hmm. pretty sure our first couple of rosters like we didn't pay and i remember the first time like we were giving out money or i say money like the first offer was that we'd pay for them to go to insomnia and insomnia was a much bigger thing back then, but like that, that was basically like it. You'd get your ticket and we'd, we'd help fund some of the accommodation. <clears throat> Money only really started being a big factor in the UK scene as it was back then when some of the big players came in, like Excel started to grow in stature and this organization called Diabolus came in that I was briefly yeah. a part of that started putting a lot of money in. And then I think we've seen, as the splits have gone on, we've seen, you know, the price has become inflated. And yeah. it's a lot more expensive to run a team these days. I think peak UK League of Legends was probably around 2018, um, up until about 2020, I think, when mm -hmm. when the UKLC was the forefront of League of Legends for the UK, and then we yeah. moved into the NLC. Um, and we still had, like, the six individual countries that encompassed the bulk of... Uh, the NLC, they still had like their own regional divisions. And I think in in recent years, unfortunately, um, since like the post pandemic, we have seen a decline in the region. Um, but yeah, prices is, for players are still pretty much the same if you want to be competitive. Um, yeah. So a lot more goes into building a roster these days, a lot more of the sports mm. science side goes into it, yeah. making sure players are the right fit. It's not so much that you get package rosters anymore although they still happen like you actually have to do a lot of scouting i know most people use the same tools like lol pros is a, an important tool for the region mm -hmm. but um understanding like the player base that's played in the region for the past couple of years is so important to make sure that you have players on board that are going to bring success to your roster 
Okay, so focusing in on the kind of progress of the steps forward that the industry uh, needs to take, what do you think sets Verdant apart as a relatively fresh new player in the UK scene and as a new entrant into the NLC Division 1? Yeah, so I think Verdant will be a real breath of fresh air into the NLC Division 1. Like, you've got an owner in Sam who I've worked with for quite a while who um, genuinely cares about the organisation and genuinely cares about League of Legends scene. I think, you know, considering Verdant, last spring had a rough time he could have easily stepped away and with yeah. all the stuff going on in the league in terms of you know it's demotion and struggles with the to like he, he could have stepped away again but he's he hasn't he's just stuck with it and i think that's because he genuinely cares about both verdant and the region you know he's not going to be as contrarian as say ruddy or as flashy as say nord but mm -hmm. I think what a lot of players and staff that have been at the organization would tell you about Verdon is that they stick to what they say they're going to do. And, you know, they're always kind to their players and kind to their staff. And, you know, we look after our own. And, you know, I think we're going to be a player in the scene. We are going to try and put forward a team that's that's going to be strong in the region and we'll push for one of those top places so i think you're going to see an organization that genuinely does care about the mlc whilst yeah. also trying to be a powerhouse within it and i think that's what the league needs right now yeah absolutely the need definitely needs uh, an injection of something it looks like verdant is going to be a big part in that refresh coming into 2023 so last question through me and uh actually quite an important one potentially quite a tricky one um but who knows uh so last question of this interview who are the wrexham afc of nlc oh the wrexham afc hollywood yeah. owners christ mm. um yeah <laughs> you know, um i mean let's see i mean you've got nord who've come in flashing the cash right mm -hmm. um you've got Ruddy, who've got they're they're more owner centric, I'd say, yeah. than the most. So that could be, kind of be like I'm not going to compare Jake to <laughs> Ryan Reynolds because I don't think <laughs> I don't think that fits. Um, no, no, I don't think so. No. <laughs> uh, the Wrexham Football Club. Um, I mean, does anyone play in red? Unique. They're a little bit red. Uh, but... They've got some red. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. I'll say it's us because we've got the Welsh representation in, in that's, myself. That's the key. The up and covers ready to take the wins off the big boys for sure. Then you know, toss up between <laughs> Sam and Ryan Reynolds for who's the best looking. I think Sam probably True. takes it by a hair, you know. True. True and based. All right, well there you have it, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for me for this interview. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. Please do us a favor and follow at Verdon underscore GG on Twitter to keep an eye out for more videos and content coming up soon. And we will see you all then.